world makes you feel ordinary, we assure you it's lying. We urge you to find your own peculiar talent. Perhaps we may be of some assistance. This announcement brought to you by... It's time for some infection, baby. I'm in the rogue mood as always. I was thinking of playing something uber serious, tier one-ish, and then I thought, hey, last time I covered uh, Infect, I never got around to playing the big Infect, which was uh, seemed to be a little bit more consistent. It has a bit higher creature count. Go over it here real quick. You'll notice the biggest difference here. Shirazaman, good to see you, buddy. If you're in the chat, please say hi. Hey, Lovecraft, what's up? So this build, uh, I've shared with a few people. One of you out there took it to a local store and got first with it. I forget who that was, but chime in if you if that is you. Um, this runs 17 basics and then all four Tree of Tails for 21 land, despite that we are not running Groundswell. We've got four uh, Vines, four Rancors, four Elves, and four Mutagenics. Nothing surprising here yet for these. Then we go to this, Larger Than Life. Little fights in the house. Uh, this is our uh, trampling what do you call uh, five through eight and uh, I really like in this style uh, I've been over this for a few weeks in a row now dispel is just everywhere and I'm really kind of having a fondness for sorceries you kind of said it is, is it okay okay here I come you know there's not much uh, surprise value once uh, something's trampling and it's usually pretty early in the game when you've got infect online uh, pytho burst running all four of these we're not messing around those games that you can kind of lose a mid to late game this just shuts the door immediately and it's always on with the land count so we're not waiting around for that one land to turn on ground swell uh, just an experiment but this is the real tech of the deck treetop bracers I've been over this before uh, in our last little uh, in fact get together or whatnot this when you're running green is guys just so good uh, There's so many decks that just you know They can just clog the ground and that's how if they don't have removal They can just block you all day and man treetop bracers it's like, unless they have flyers, you're good to go. Of course, the best card in the deck as far as infect creatures go, Ickerclaw Murr. And we round it out with three Corpse Cur main because uh, if we run into black, we're going to lose. If we run into Demir, we got to do it quick, that sort of thing. But these really help give you gas. In our sideboard, we're running three Blessings. I might want to cut this to two. Um, but, you know, technically we're going to be kind of a dead dog to a lot of... Uh, red and black based decks even the uh i lost real bad the other night to uh, uh what is it the, is it delver build i just it didn't help that i was drawing really poorly but um anyway what are you gonna do and this is probably the most prominent deck where you do want all four fairy macabras relic isn't fast enough isn't good enough you need to have that end of turn get rid of the moments piece against decks that are running that um thankfully prismatic strands isn't that good against this because we have seven artifact creatures but that being said, Gut Shot it serves double duty. We're going to nail, um, you know, when you're going against white mages and such, uh, they're going to bring in their standard bearers. So you need that. And also against Delver matchups and Tribe, pretty good to have. I have one Pulse of Marasa in the sideboard because once you start recurring these uh, corpse curves, it could be pretty cool. And because of that, our life package, we're only running three Nature's Claim. Wang Chung in the house, Daddy Deluxe, please love me, possibly adopt two. <laughs> okay. Uh, I might consider. All right, so yeah, that being said, um, what what made me want to have the land count this high was in a in a in aggressive strategy, RDW, goblins, etc. Even goblins runs a pretty high mana count compared to uh, like sixteen. It usually runs like eighteen or nineteen. Um, when you just just sleeve this up, it's in the propaganda soul hole, and uh, you'll see 
when you almost every single time it's your draw step you want to draw land it's it's uh whether you're regenerating the mamba or you just you just want to get to this fourth mana to start really if you're going against a control deck that's killing everything and you, you you still got a little bit of gas with this so and then uh treetop racers obviously but it's it's just nice to have that little uh extra you know maybe vines math behind stuff and things like that so yes mike man i agree pretty creepy but i love creepy anyway and i love you all too thank you for joining me here so without further ado um, I'm going to go on over and, uh, I, you know, I was thinking I might justify the next layout for next week. I was running really behind today. This is a older card frame. It has nothing to do with today's show. I apologize. And Flipside Gaming is going to be sponsoring us pretty soon. Next week, I'll have a promo for that. I was trying to get something together today and it was just, it was turning into a rush job. And I don't, I don't like to have my name attached to anything that isn't spectacular or feel you know that i can show and proudly put my name on so i was starting to feel a little pushed together so i'm gonna wait till next week to show that promo but uh if any of you want to support us early if you go over to flipsidegaming.com and enter the promo code propaganda in all caps uh if you spend ten dollars or more you get a whopping ten percent off so works out to be a pretty good deal and then uh you know after so many kajillion things we might get a few pennies out of it we'll see if it works out if not we'll drop it like a bad habit here we go we're off to the races we have one land despite 21 but we're going to keep it yes i am uh here but i can't type um so we're going to keep this knowing that we have extra land but again we want to see land here and we've got protection and if he's on creatures we should have this so we'll keep this dun, 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 dun. here we go Hopefully they're not sniping us. They might do it just to see if if we are indeed live. But ah, so anyway, I'm buying back into MTGO. Popper sucks. What? <laughs> what you talking about, sucker? All right. So yeah, I've, I've actually been bankrolled that enough. I might end up getting a, a few paper decks that are more current. All my stuff is like from 2007 or eight, and uh, I still play kitchen tabletop with my boys. But yeah, it's pretty pretty cool. Ooh. I agree, Wing, to blasphemy. So we like these slow starts, but the problem is they're usually on a black or red build when that stuff goes down. So we've got a few options here, but I'm going to hit while I can. We're going to come on over with Larger Than Life. Outside of this being Demir, this might be a um, an issue where... Um, yeah, disfigure. Do we do we hold it back? Do we not? I think it's smarter to hold it back. We only have the one creature. We'll see what happens. Oh, he forgot to trip. That's good times. All righty. It's going to time you out there, Mike. <laughs> That's sure I was going, oh, geez. Okay, well, maybe they had the answer, but I actually, with that aggressive start, I kind of like that play because I, I just, we don't know what he's on. He's on two colors something or other. So they're going to bring in some answers, some heat. We don't know what it is. Um, it's less likely that this is aggro based. Write down the uh, W there while I can. Um, the world hates Paul. Good afternoon, man. It's been a few weeks. Good to see you. Welcome back, my friend. Or if you've been here and just been quiet, then what gives? All right. So we got a little gimme there. I think our opponent was a little on tilt. Not tilt. Uh, just, you know, probably F6 themselves and forgot. So I don't know what to do here. Uh, we don't know what we're going up against them. Um, yeah, Treetop Bracers is, is one of my favorite cards, and in fact, it can't be blocked unless they have flyers. And uh, against pretty much everything but flyer decks, this is just auto win. Um, I used to run the uh, Forest Walk, but hey, maybe they're not on Forest, or even uh, Boros comes out a little bit slow. Of course, Boros can kill everything, so not a good matchup. Um, the Artifact Land is for Wretch Mind, and w as well as Nature's Claiming Ourselves against Burn. It's just a nice uh, extra thing to be able to grab there. All right. Well, I'm just going to submit and uh, hope hope for it. That's right, Mike, man. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's old tech if you're a constant follower of propaganda. I've been over it ad nauseum, but understandably, it kind of makes people do a little bit of a double take. Tree chop, brah. <laughs> yeah, and I was, uh, you know, there's also... Uh, Predator Strike, which grants 3-3 three, three and Trample at instant speed for the same mana. But this deck theory is just all, uh, you let up one turn, you don't kill my stuff, it should be able to kill you. There's no 
I, in fact, I just had a, in fact, mirror completely different. Um, and I just could sense that they were mana screwed. They, you know, first turn glistener, it's like, okay. And then it was like stultified the whole, the whole game. And it was, as I was, you know, churning out stuff and I've considered even the green retracing this by one, but I just don't know what I would lose. So yeah. Anyway, Pytho burst. Yeah. That was the little show intro. I, I reversed the image so that it looked like it was talking, but other than that, how's everybody doing? How was your week? Any uh, exciting adventures anybody's on? I don't know what's uh, up with our opponent here. We did submit. This is uh, hopefully, who knows? Hopefully we're not being sniped. Otherwise, this will be a really quick GG. But like I said, uh, there's no delusions here. If if this, if this we run up against like, you know, just real steady removal, it's pretty hard to come back with even despite the uh, corpse core package there. So. We will kill this. We have plenty of land, plenty of creatures, and some defense. We'll keep this. Got these beautiful forests. Sometimes I'm torn to play the old school style or just the sheer art of these. Yeah, we'll keep this. We'll discuss a few other infect decks and like last week. I, I went uh, I made even money in the challenge. I think I went I lost I lost the very last round and I was surprised I snuck into the winner's bracket or break even bracket but played mono black land destruction. I'll probably play it again this week. Uh one of them top aided and I actually th I I'm trying I swear this isn't my ego talking. I really think my design's better. Uh he had the what do you call the um that little 1/1 one -one guy that draws a card. I just don't see that doing much in the deck. Similar to, we both lost Chittering Rats, but um, I draw something. I really want it to count. I think this is Tribe. We're seeing a Probe and a Plains, and we saw uh, Evolving Wilds last turn. This is probably Tribe. Good news about Tribe. If uh, we block with Infect and they boost it, which, believe it or not, a lot of people do that, uh, and they think they're saving it. It isn't. So 8686 in the house. You're not going to like this show. It's not very serious. We're just playing a fun infect build. Here we go. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. As oh, I get it. I was a little not enough coffee this morning. If you pronounce the font as kicker. <laughs> bum bum bum. All right. Yeah, I was tempted. I was trying to build like a reanimator strategy, and then uh, I actually I I lied to one of you. Somebody asked what I was playing or what I was going to be playing this Friday and up to about a day ago it was going to be the Simic Infect build which maybe I'll go over if we have some uh, some time there maybe if you can remind me a little fighter Shiraz at the end of the show or I can just write it down that would, that would save some uh, UG tempo but I, I was I just didn't want to tempt fate you know I was sitting there playing and it was typical of any deck I've been over this ad nauseum where you're so into it and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like 11 and one or something tournament practice, which doesn't mean anything. We all know that. And then all of a sudden, right when I was kind of, you know, yeah, kind of puffing the magic chest out and thing, thinking like, yeah, I think I, I, I got this thing working. I even sent a little fight a message saying like, I think I got this to work. I think it'll be on the show. All of a sudden, man, it was just like this house of cards. Just I just, I just started falling apart. So, all right. Well, I'm pretty sure he's on tribe. They don't really have a counter on this end of it. Um, I'm just going to go for volume here in case there's some bounce. I want to put up a threat fairly early. Now, they are, they will have... I'm going to keep Mutagenic back because I know a lot of these lists either run between two and three gut shots and or piracy charms. So I want to be able to negate that. Vines will be nice next turn. But you see our land at four, it's, it feels really good. We wanna, we're want we going to be able to bring out the Mamba and regenerate it and kick Vastwood and all these good things. So it'll be all right. Oh, yeah, Flash Gordon. But uh, unless somebody's really hardcore in a propaganda, like Shiraz and company or Mike Mann, they're not going to really know what Flash Gordon is other than a really bad 70s movie. Um, and bad joke here on propaganda, but I just called it that because there's a lot of flash creatures, but it's pretty much uh, UG death touch is probably the most, what do you call, best way to say it. So is it just me or does the meta feel really roguey right now? Could be. I, um, I've, noticed, I've noticed that a little bit. It is, you know, I have to hand it to uh, Turbo Kitty when the initial design for, um, they don't even call it that anymore, Boros Kitty. They just call it Boros. It's that deck, like when you, 
and yes, I do this. I, I lay in bed at night thinking, okay, what can I what can I bring against that? There's the culprit. Oh, we'll keep this alive. That's one of our best creatures. I sit in bed at night thinking, what can what can I bring against this? And okay, what about this? What about this? And the thing that really gets you, it's not so much, you know, the red it's the red white combo. So it's like, okay, you bring in a protection from red creature, they journey to nowhere you. Or you bring in this cool little trick and the uh what do you call it? The uh, sanctifiers show up and they they blow up stuff. So Vaprundini, I think that new to the format. What's the artifact land f for in this build? Somebody in chat, please answer that or scroll back in the chat. But good to see you, my friend. Thank you for joining us here. The best format ever. Hopefully one of the best shows ever. But hey, that's just uh, my ego talking. Who cares? Man, am I glad this is rogue is where it's at, man. Ooh, OK, well, he's bouncing that definitely uh on you know what now this is tribe for sure and if you're new to tribe there's uh popper great or not popper great magic great uh lsv took it out for a uh, spin that was pretty awesome yeah wretch mind and uh we can also target our own land this way against burn with uh, nature's claim and negate a fire blast so there you go vaprundini i think that's how you say it maybe a houdini reference i'm not sure i can't for some reason some of the fonts come through a little darker than others so we've got an answer in that he's probably on circular logic by now but we'll keep back our mamba Or will we? This is where I'm a little... Uh, what I want to do here is make sure that I have a blocker of each color in case he's running Apostle's Blessing. So normally Rancor on Ikerclaw Murr is just good game and it's over and it's awesome. But what I want to do here, I'm going to put it on my Elf so that I can keep back the Murr and the Mamba. They have a lot of respect even at four cards with this list. We know two of them are lands. That's fine. Maybe he'll make the mistake of blocking here. Three cards in his hand. He could still do it. Meth is there. Kick him in the junk and be done with him. <laughs> That's what we're trying, my friend. All right. Now, hopefully because of this, they feel a little emboldened to block. Let's see. I'm just going to come in with one. Just in case. We still have our vines back up here. Please block. Yeah, that's hopeful. Very rare that somebody does that. But now we've got two colors to block with, and we'll go all out next turn. That's my purse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I'm tired of this tribe. <laughs> Could be blowing away in the wind, right? All righty. And this is when you just absolutely love Icar Claw Murr. Let's see if they reveal anything. I'll dismiss that. Come on, Augur. Show us the goods. I am so tired of seeing Augur. Oh, my God. That card is just everywhere. So we know he's got a gut shot. Uh, let's not do that. Is it really that important, though? Hmm. Attack with that. He's going to do that and block. All right. I'm going to... Three cards in his hand. I've got an infinity blocker there. I'm, I'm going to cast it on this. Say no to that. Dismiss. I get the vibe. No offense to ass kicker here, but I get the vibe they're a little new to tribe. That or they're just having a bad day. Not a good deck to take out for the uneducated Would that be too harsh not to say that they are they might hand my ass to me next next game who knows come on over that's a lot of uh <laughs> all right well here we are keep that back that back that back uh, let me rock with these two
Let's go with an experienced tribe players in the league currently. Let's hope. No block, no respect. And I hold back this land. Now we're fine on land. Hopefully we don't draw much more. Do they got it? Three cards, that's tough. I gotta have gush soon. Or this gets out of hand quick. All right, here we go. We have double regenerate. If I swing for two here, put them at seven, next turn I can go all in. And I still play it safe. Really respect this this deck wins out of nowhere, just like Is It Blitz does. Unlike Is It Blitz, we don't have to worry about so much removal, but I'm not familiar with Tribe. What mistakes is he making? Not so much mistakes. Um, well, game one, he didn't trip his uh, wilds, and uh, that was an auto scoop. But other than that, it's just a bit of tempo plays. Um, seems a little hasty, like with the Echoing Truth, the Circular Logic. I don't know. You kind of want to save stuff for an alpha strike when that when that scenario goes down, but we'll see. Any of our big kaboom spells would be nice. I'm sure he's sitting on a circular logic, which we can't really do anything about. Even tri players can get a little counter happy sometimes. And they're probably just throwing things at the wall right now, like, who the hell plays Infect? What is this? What is the meaning of this? All right. This screams we don't have parts of the puzzle, and we're trying to block. Come on. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, remember what I said about too many lands? I knew this was going to go down. It's going to come over with two again. Double tribe on the board. A Giga Drows and a Gush, and we're still dead, so... I want to feign like we uh, have some sort of fog effect. Hmm. Okay. We'll rock like that. I think if I played Tribe, I would still not play Augur Abolus. I really like three or four uh, Delver of Secrets instead, but I've only top eight, uh, top eighted once out of it, but that was one out of two times, so... Tribe felt pretty sent. Oh my goodness. Somebody sent the CPU the message that, hey, you know, if I attack with everybody, this is so. Ah. No, I can't do that. I'll just rock like this again. <laughs> Sorry for the sniff. Keep the chat going, guys. Makes me know that uh, my feed's still going through. And about three weeks ago, there was that real big delay that was happening, and I've. I was cracking up because I actually didn't, I wasn't hardlined in. It blew my mind. I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't have, uh, I didn't have everything plugged in. It's terrible. So I was on Wi-Fi and that's why the uh, delay happened. So haven't done it since, but if you're wondering. He has to if he doesn't have a trick. And if he has a trick, we're still dead. So next turn. Well, I definitely want to, I don't think I even have fog effects anymore. I just used to run moments peace style things, but I was like, nah, you know what? This is all aggro all the time here. So there's one culprit, but that costs two. He could still have gush, tap, boom. I could still have it here. Enough cards to warn it. Weird that he took the, uh, didn't take a blocker. So now I will... Let's see, they could have a Piracy Charm. Four cards left. Ugh, wow. Well, whatever I attack with is going to get killed, so let's keep him honest. He's at nine, in fact. Let's see what goes down here. Definitely don't need this right now. Would be really nice if it was the Trample card, but he's probably on Circular Logic. Here we go with this. Hopefully he tries to pump, but we already saw that he's not that new to tribe, or to infect, I should say. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Maybe he is. This happens all the time. See, our opponent thinks that making it 1-5 will make it live, and so often just people don't get fundamentally what this does. So say goodbye to Tribe in 3, 2, 1. Bye-bye. Good play, good play. Get them cards drawn. So if this did go to a game three, which it, I guess shouldn't... Uh-oh. Ah, good games. All right, so we're 2-0. Sorry I can't chat with you, buddy. I'll say good things later. All righty. A little lucky there, game one. We'll just jump right into the next one here. Excuse me for a minute. No cold or nothing. I just, uh, sometimes yeah. the vapors happen for some reason. Zerlik in the house. Wing Chung 4. Mike Man. Little fight. Oh, the regulars. Well, at least we won't go completely defeated, as is sometimes the uh, worry with playing pure rogue. Collection. So, yeah, this list. Uh, oops. All right. Well, we'll just jump on over to the next match here. Oh, thank you for that. Uh, I sorry I can't chat. Thank you for saying hi. Um, I just can't. I can't chat. I've got all my hotkeys set up to camera angles or, or to roll the footage, so I can't chat. But yes, good game. Would you like to play first? Yes. Well, we've got a lot of lands. We've got two creatures. Oh boy, so tempted to keep this. I'm going to throw it back. I don't want to lose a game to Mulligan. Now I've got to throw this back. Now we don't have a creature. Mulligan. Oh, I love Seal of Strength, and I usually play it. I'll go over another Infect list later, but I'll put this on top. We've got two creatures, Evasion. Hopefully, what we want to see here is like Forest. Because we can really race with treetop bracers. Yeah, Wang Chung, I always run Seal of Strength usually in these builds. Um, but what I was noticing in my uh, typical Infect list, like, uh, you know, a little lower land count and such, the uh, the Seal in this metagame was just being used as a defensive spell. So I wanted to just add more meat and hit to the deck. So, oh great, now our treetop bracer is going to be completely useless probably. We'll see. Who knows? I just come in here in case they've got vapor snag or something. We can at least egg that out a little bit. If not, we'll just end it with Blight Mamba and try to get the volume aspect down here. This is when I do love Infect. There's two things I really, really, really love in, about Infect. I've been over this a few times, but I just love how it breaks rules. It's like, uh-oh, I think we're going to lose this one just because of the presence of Mountain. Games 2 and 3, it's just it's so hard to keep in, it, in against these guys. All right. So here's that. We've got, um, but one of the things I love about Infect is it just, like I said, it breaks so many rules. I just love it for that reason. Um, if they're gaining life, doesn't matter. And then uh, just, well, in this scenario, when we thought it was control, it's like you don't have many turns to sit back and hopefully try to counter stuff if you're getting picked apart by uh, Infect critters there. So we've got Vines, which will probably be, end up being used on the Kiln Fiend. The one big problem with the uh, you are fiend lately I've noticed is spell pierce or spell the one that does uh, somebody bring it up um, counter a spell unless they pay two that's been ruining me lately I've I've run into that a lot well I got a feeling they're gonna have apostles blessing regardless that's spell pierce that's right. Okay, it is correct. I was thinking I was slipping into modern lingo there. There it is, yeah. Non-creature unless they pay two. Well, I could attack here with both. I actually think that might be the play. I could hold back the Mamba, attack with that. Ah... Uh, hmm... 
See, I kind of want to make them both prime targets because we know they're probably on lightning bolt. Actually, let me put this on here. I'll attack for two. And another neat thing about treetop bracers, games two and three, you're pretty safe against electricery style effects. Usually you can pump something and end up saving your whole team for one mutagenic sometimes. So correct the correction, says Wang Chen. <laughs> All right. Beautiful lands on both rounds so far from our opponents. Much majestic things to look at. Hmm. I think I'm just going to take this. I smell a Cyclops right behind this. Our vines might serve. Now, that really screams he... If he doesn't play Cyclops here... Okay, there's Cyclops. I was going to say, if he doesn't play that, then he really does not have Lightning Bolt. But that's not a safe assumption anymore. Hmm. Well, now we have that. We could hit him for four. I think I would rather wait on that. Or we brace the glistener and go in for two and hold that back for defense. Do you ever foil out your decks and pop her? No, World Hates Paul, I hate foils. They're just distracting. Uh, a lot of times I don't like the way the art looks as much. I'll trade away like my foil things for like two regulars all often. I've just never been a fan of foils. I'm so glad that they're popular because I, I always trade them off and get good uh get good traits for him so what i'm thinking here is putting uh the treetop bracers on the glistener elf and just swinging with the elf of course we won't be able to really trigger mamba there i think we might be able to uh use surprise value on that that's you know if i attack with both i've got the game if I attack with both, I'm going to do that. We're playing aggro f for a reason. Let's see what he does. Okay. Do I kill it? It's so tempting to try to kill this, but I don't think we kill it. What do you guys think? One more mana, that would have that would have been game, but a few reasons. We need to be able to regenerate Mamba, and I want to be able to stop some sort of um, trick with uh, either a not so much a bolt, but a uh, battle rage. Three Teratops, good to see you. I think you keep vines up to stop. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Zerlik. All right, we'll let this go. I'll be at five. Cyclops math might be a little off there. Kill it. Mm, I want to be able to interact with vines, and I also want to be able to regenerate this. If he gushes here, we might have a long day. Sure helps when that infect comes through, but it might not help enough with three mana available. That's a tough call there. One of those hindsight plays. If we lose here, it'll be like, yeah, I should have killed it. But if not, then it would have been like, well, we're all super dead now. All right. At least they don't have circular logic and a way to do it. Yeah, that's a good point. 13's there. Now he knows I'm not on fog. You are a fiend. Brainstorm and we're going to be toast. Yeah, no, that was 8686. Killed that. Let's see. It'll make me feel a little bit better, though, if he has uh, enough to kill me with just the fiend, because then it'll be like, well, if I killed it, then that would have been either way. Hmm. 
Or maybe the best play was just to hold back on the uh, the dude. This is true. This is true. Perfect 19 coming on through. Pop. And we are down a game against Fiend. It's all right. So the treetop bracer is actually doing a little bit of duty here, but we're going to need enough stuff to make it relevant. Games two and three. All right. Ugh. Well, now I'm going to lose a cur and not much else. I'm trying to think. Uh, Apostle's Blessing might be good. Two of these, one cur. Actually, the Marasa might be a little bit better for last ditch uh, life efforts. Hmm. Alrighty. Beyond the draw, treetop's going to be good. This is just a. Who hits harder first? So I'm going to go all in with the blessings just to keep things alive and swinging for free. Let's hope we can get there. Woohoo! All right. Yeah, I got to update some of the promos too. Our YouTube counts are almost at the 2000 mark. So. I've got that old promo that says 1,000. It's like, got to update that, do a few other things, set up the holiday schedule, and also uh, do a commercial for Flipside Gaming, who's our new sponsor. If you want to visit them at flipsidegaming.com, $10 or more, we get to 10% off if you use the promo code Paparganda. I don't even think we need the exclamation point there, but we'll see. And you know what? In a few weeks or months, if that sucks, we'll pull the plug, but... Doesn't hurt to try. We're 1 0 so far. So hopefully, we can make this 2 0. No thanks to me. Yes, I want to play first. Mulligan this. Well, we'll keep it. Now we really want a land. Fortunately, our opponent probably brought in two or three electricities, and without Mutagenic showing up, we're in a tight spot. As they would say in Oh Brother, where art thou? Let's do this. Hey, maybe they are too. Boy, maybe they're in the same scenario. One land, maybe an electricity or three. Who knows? How's everybody liking the new uh, arena? I know Little Fight's been on it like crazy. We'll keep this. Throw this on the bottom. And lead off with the love. And a lot of people are calling it Gigantic Sealed. Right? It was a really, I shared a link on Facebook. A lot of people getting a little upset where they'll invest 10 to 20 hours and then they end up getting some absolutely unplayable rare, but... Who's to say? Aha. Arena's been okay, but I'm a bit bored of standard. Yeah, I've heard it called gigantic sealed and gigantic standard. I put in my email for it, but still haven't gotten any sort of like, hey, here you go, here's the code to go download it or play it. So I'll give it a go probably this weekend if they get back to me, but. I still can't believe that Hearthstone didn't just <laughs> uh, sue them outright. I'm going to go all in here. I don't want to invest just because of the presence of electricity. I don't want to get two for one here. So if he sets down a creature here, we can trample it and go larger than life. Or he kills it and we just put out another creature. One of the bad things about playing Infect, though, is these kind of plays, like if, if this was damage, you know, and we technically did 12, it's like you 
people can just probe themselves or I, I got beat by one line spy the other day because they were just like, hell, I'll go to two life. No problem. You're playing infect. <laughs> I think we got this one unless he's running days. This apologies for when infect meets you are fiend. It's just like who goes first and who draws a little bit better. Minus aforementioned punts. This is probably some sort of lightning bolt. Yeah, I think um, Arena is a very good gateway drug for magic so far from what I read on the reviews and watched some people playing on Twitch. But All right. Yeah, gosh. Can't really go for it, can we? We are infecting the airwaves, R&D function. Yes, well said, my friend. Could go there, but I'd rather assume that, or imply that we have vines. I'm gonna drop this down, double threat. If he's got electricery, okay, if we draw a forest, we can at least pump up the mamba. Go from there, just baiting that we have vines. He probed us, I don't think we drew the mamba yet, but we'll see. Here it comes. Pop. All right. I'm going to bring this out just because I don't have the mana for uh, regeneration there. And if he does have a creature out, this trample will really push it over the top. It takes a lot of balls to play Infect in this metagame. Every other deck is just chock full of removal. I don't know. Did they reprint port or something? Gosh, Rishon and Port, if that's what you're talking about, Zerlik. I know that was just, gosh, like the 180 mark or something. It was pretty pretty damn expensive. I know I sold one of mine for like 120 at one point. Just didn't need it. All right, well, an electricery gets us here. I'm going to act like we've got it. Um, yeah, in the recent Masters. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't been paying too close attention to the prices. This suggests... Now, if he's got Lightning Bolt, he's going to do it right now. I would think. Making sure we don't have Vines. All for the price of two life. In a battle that does not matter. Oh, wow. Boy, I feel good for selling mine then. Jeez. All right. Well, this is interesting. We're going to be able to save our larger than life. See if he's got anything. Wish I could have played larger than life. Extra mana there, but there's about six cards in his deck that just ruin this play. Here comes one of them, probably. There it is. Boink. And we'll play this. Now if he attacks, he'll tell us a lot about their hand. Probably on. Ouch. All right. Hurting for certain now. Did meet. Hopefully we don't go down 0-2. It would be nice to pull even on one of these, but they're uh, feeling pretty cavalier with their life here because, again, we're on infect. Cat Party 88. Is this your go-to comfort deck? Oh, I've got a lot of those. Just about anything roguey is comforty or aggro, aggro rogue. I think we're going to be entering the 1-1 one -one realm here real quick. No thanks to a punt earlier, but kind of a hindsight pump, but yeah, I think that was probably a punt. Thirteen. Can I get more? Here's a seventeen. One more, I'll do it. Ag rogue. Yeah, that'd be a good username if I could go back in time. He's probably what got a bolt behind this. I 
There we go. All right. No biggie. One, one. We'll just jump right into the next one. Take a commercial break after this next one. But for today, I've got quite a bit of editing to do for next week's propaganda and such. So I was trying to play something a little bit quicker, too. So I see a lot of aggro around in Popper. Mid-range is just not there or what? Oh, it's everywhere. Um, Boros is like just won the challenge again this last weekend, I think. It was like 60% of the meta game. it seemed like. It was just every other matchup was that way. So, yeah. Next week, I'm serious. I might want to just adjust my entire screen, screen left. to. It's like, okay, you want to do a bouncy screen? I'm ready for you. It'd be kind of weird to have chat on the other side, but I might try it. Who knows? Obviously, we'll mulligan this. We'll keep. Put this on top. On the draw. Rust man. Okay, now we... Looks like we're up against elves. Really want to see treetop bracers immediately. Distant melody, timber watch in the house. He's got the aggro draw, and it doesn't help that our uh, our glistener is an elf. But we don't segregate. We'll bring this in. Maybe they'll make the mistake of blocking with it. White border, yeah, we gotta we gotta take this stuff down. Down goes this. Here comes probably timber watch. Even better. Problem with larger than life. If it has one, it's not much of a surprise value there. Boom, boom. Just gonna rush on over here. Swing. Really, 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 really need treetop bracers in this matchup. That's out. Got maybe two turns left. Yeah, not a big fan. I mean, I'm a fan of land grant when my opponent plays it, but I know why they're doing it. Every time I pick up elves and I'm getting serious with it, I, I tend to get flooded and I'll have like 10 lands in it. And I'm like, good God. One thing I don't need. This could be over really quick. Yeah, treetop bracers is... 100% the game here. It doesn't help that we have an elf out here, too. That's probably going to help kill us. One of the meanest things about elves, anybody playing green, it's usually helping them quite a bit. So I can't quite see a scenario where we win this one. Game one, anyway. Pop down to seven. Let's see. Well, technically, they could not block, but I doubt that's going to happen. There's the block. Yeah, we could play one, two. Well, we can let that go. Nah, he's going to be able to double pump. That's only three, four. We'll go down some elves. Bring out a snake. Keep Vastwood back. Dead in the water, but... Don't want to auto-scoop. Definitely dead here. Okay. Just cancel this. One and one. Yes, one and one, sir. Let's try and stay alive. Probably not. Clutching at straws here. Definitely going to game two. I'll put the all there already. Booyah. 
Not sure if uh, Gut Shot's really a good play here. Even Apostle's Blessing might be better, just because of uh, being able to get through with that lethal. We're a little worried about a Veridan Longbow if they have a Priest draw heavy, but as you can see here, we're dead meat. Boom, perfect. All right, off to sideboard land. Here we are. Hmm. Well, I'm not going to be really wanting to see Kurs at all. Mambas might be good on defense. Really want these bracers to show up. I'm thinking I bring in all the uh, Apostles' Blessings here just for the uh, sheer, if we don't draw treetop bracers, we can uh, go from there. Of course, it's frustrating if I have uh, Rancor on something or treetop bracers. It's not going to do that much good, is it? What do you guys vote? Apostles' Blessing or Gut Shot? Anyone, anyone? Discuss. I'll be right back. I'm going to use the restroom real quick. Nobody yet. Nobody with suggestions. Hmm. Well, let's mix it up. We'll go one and two and submit. Let's do this. Ask a question. Everybody gets quiet. What's the deal? All righty. Hmm. Now we'll keep this. One more land would be really good with Ichor Claw. Ichor Claw is so good against elves if it lives. Ah, yeah, I went 2-1. Here we go. Unfortunately, we lead off with an elf, which only helps their deck. I would really like to get four of the alternate artwork of Glistener. It's so awesome. Not much life to play around with here. We're really gunning for our Aquarian Ranger, though. There it is. Ooh, moment's peace, too. Okay. Reason number one not to play, land grant. It screams, it screams that uh, you don't have any secrets. Okay. I'll hold back on that in the ranger. <laughs> hmm. I'm going to do this just to get through here. Huh. Spoiler season. What do we got? Quarian Ranger showing up. All right. Dire she blows. Whoosh. Ugly elves out. I don't want to justify his uh, plays here, given free information. Alrighty. I'll blow that up. This way, if the block does happen, land please. Alright. Well, let's see. That's quite a bit of damage if we can push through that. However, I'm almost more tempted to just attack, set down Ecker Claw and go. Seven must be blocked. Yeah, seven must be blocked. A little redundant, but it's kind of like getting rid of all of his mana producers here in a handful of two, and we still get in for six. And I think just about anything else. 
wins game two here. Minus the treetop bracers. Okay, out comes another mystic. Oh wait, that was the one he played, right? And the reason I don't like land grant, it's hard to keep track of all this stuff. All right, one and one against elves. All right, I'll lose the blessing and bring in the last gut shot. Yeah, this is just the MVP card. We really want to see this. The amount of pump behind this, and it's good to go. Mm. All right, I'm up and at it now. Sorry for the choppy responses. It was on my cell. Good to have you back there, little fight. All right. Hey, good times. We don't have an elf. We got treetop racers. We got vines. And we got rancor. We will keep this. Hopefully they don't have a crazy good draw. They're going first. That always sucks, but what are you going to do? Actually, now I would like to see a glistener just to block with. All right, let's see what they've got. Ooh, visionary, vanguard, timber watch. And it comes. So this will be close. They're going to get that jump. All right, I like this a lot because I can block with this. And it doesn't trigger their, uh, what do you call Visionary. Actually, given this attack, I might want to just enchant that. Timber watch in the house. Okay. That's two. Then it'll be uh Yeah. I was thinking kill that, but I think we've got this. Next turn, uh, if we draw a land. Dun, dun, dun. Pond treetop bracers. Swing for free. Change of plans. Trade to win faster. If we draw a land next turn, we'll win. That's always a nice feeling. Vanguard down. Visionary down. Normally, this is when Infect would run out of gas because they just block, 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 block. But not with Treetop Bracers. Hello, why do I need such a long name? Good to see you. Land, please. No, but just as good. Ha! Ah. Now, we don't even really have to worry about... What do you call a... Uh, well, let's see. That'll be six, seven, eight. Let's do that. Sorry I'm late, says... Eric Wheat, nice to see you, sir. Thank you for chiming in. We will attack. And then we will go over like this. Hopefully we'll be up 2-1. Minus a punt in round two. Boink. Elves killing elves. Who would have thought? It's a terrible world. There we go. All right. So we beat Tribe, we beat Elves, and we lost to Fiend. Pretty typical. I'll just jump right into the next one since I used my uh, bladder break during uh, sideboarding. <laughs> All right, we got some moniker, moniker love going on in the chat here. So yeah, my oldest is out of town for a basketball tournament this weekend, and so I got the little man, me, I'm going to take him to a... Uh, a uh, archery little academy. I'm going to get our uh, scattershot archer fix in and do a little father son bonding over target practice. Probably tomorrow. We'll see. And uh, word to the wise next gosh, five weeks, I'm going to be pretty, pretty crazy busy. It's like May sweeps. We always do it in April. By the time May rolls around, we're kind of weaning out of it. And then the end of May, it's just like vacation till. Gosh, September. If I could have made a shorter name, I would have. It's Twitch's fault. <laughs> I could see raging about that. Just like enter a username. It's like, no, enter again. No, no, no. And it's like, well, fine. How's this? Again, uh, I'll give away some cards if anybody can tell me how to fix that damn sliding screen. It's just been constant for like six weeks now. It's just driving me nuts. We will keep. We got two lands. One of the only things I don't like about Tree of Tales, other than uh, really weird scenarios with uh, Gorilla Shaman, is when you're um, 
deciding what to do. Ooh, looks like a uh, exhum deck maybe. Sometimes you can think I've got a mulligan. It's like, no, 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 I got two lands. Hold on. If this is the case, we're going to feel really good about having four fairy macabras. Yeah, we're 2 1 robot. Hey, look, the robot got it right finally. The last few weeks, it's been like the Luxakov is 62 and 80 or some crazy stuff that makes no sense. Reanimator. I'm calling it. Gain all the life you want. If there was a good infect quote, that would be it. So you go ahead and gain all that life, baby. Oh, yeah. All right. Here we are. Lightning Bolt ends us. I'm just going to run in with this. Really want to get Icker Claw going. This way, uh, I'm going to let this go just because if he is playing Exhum, I've got a creature. He's probably going to do that and let it live, though. Eldrazi Devastator hits the board. Okay. We'll bring out our lovely creature here. And hopefully they don't have Exhum already, but sometimes, sometimes. Note to self, bring in all of our Fairy Macabras. There's part of the puzzle. Probably going to throw out a, another Eldrazi or a Dragon's Breath if you're new to this style deck. Stinkweed's in the house. That's pretty cool. Treetop Bracer's not going to do much good against Stinkweed. Ha! Ah. Exhum. There it is. With Dragon's Breath. Yikes. Does that have Annihilator on it? No, it's just big. Big enough to kill us quickly. Let me do the math here. Gonna let this through. All right. Well, that's uh, five, six, seven, eight. Mm, darn it. Well, I want a blocker. Maybe set up the blocker and just attack for now. This doesn't have trample, right? Just haste. I'm gonna set up for my little alpha strike next turn. Keep this stuff back. One of us has lethal next turn. We'll see. I'm um, doing this mainly because the Exhum deck tends to be all in when it has Exhum and just kind of plays what it has access to. So Lightning Bolt here on a Mertz. Like, okay, I'll Vines it. That put us a little bit out of the race, but... In comes... What's this going to be? Stinkweed, probably? Play Stinkweed, I might not even block. Kunz Frazen! Oh my gosh, okay, that is definitely a punt. I looked at it, I just saw Haste, I completely forgot that it had Trample. Wowza. Well, I can always use Mutagenic on there. Playing Pirate in a new arena, this is a little fight, really made me feel the Pirate story. Yeah, most people... Uh, Come on over, baby. Can I survive? I blocked that. That has 8, 9, 10, 11. Now let me get through there. Block here. He's going to pump. And 10. 
11. What's he got? Flame Blast, maybe? You know, the way that worked out, that almost wasn't a punt. But I did still negate what the actual card did. So, it's like, come on, give us one of our big boys there. So that's a uh, kicker this. Right, that'll be 9, 10. It should be enough. Cast on this. Attack! Boink! Alrighty. Punch Munt! We still get through it. Ended up working in our favor. Alright, all the Fairy Macabre's coming in the house. Two. A bit slow for Kerr. Mm. The reason I have Kerr main, you might be asking, like, well, you keep seeming to side it out. Yeah, just Elves, Yorfiend, Tribe, very fast decks. Not going to get there. But in games where you're just running into a Caligula style, what I mean by that is kill everything, kill everything, kill everything style decks, you really need that advantage in game one. That's why they're main, and it gives us uh, fodder for a uh, discard later. So, all right. We didn't see much of that. Fairy Macabre. They probably have, um, what do you call, a, there's definitely going to be some uh, electricery maybe. Apostle's Blessing, Gut Shot, Nature's Gun, all these things are going to do absolutely nothing. So we're just looking for one card to take out. There's not much blocking going on. You could probably argue one Bracer. I'm going to do that. They have Stinkweed. Uh, most of their creatures are dropping with haste. So I think this is the way I'm going to board. Anybody got an objection to it? Let me know. Ha. And I will go over the Simic Death Touch deck effectively, or what would I, what's the right word? Affectionately known as uh, Flash Gordon. Do it, do it. All right, let's do it. Somebody asked earlier if I had a comfort deck. Well, I do have a comfort card in my sideboard, as everyone knows, and that is Fairy Macabre. I just adore that card. It breaks so many rules. Mulligan. Uh, mulligan. And keep. Ugh. Come on, show me a fairy. Need them early against this deck. Bottom. Need land or a macabre, to, or macabre to show up. I always say it wrong. Sorry about that. Surprisingly good card against us if uh, it's game one, but not games two and three in this scenario. It's kind of an interesting energy here with... Uh, it's like they don't really want to kill your stuff because then it just comes back and blocks. In theory, anyway. What sort of treachery is this? The Igneous Pouncer is a neat call in this. Uh-oh, looks like somebody might have a very quick game if I don't draw macabre, Macabre here. The one thing I didn't want. Okay. I'm going to play this now. Just because if he does have like a uh, stinkweed imp or something go down, we can at least do something about it. All right. Or that. We'll be able to power through it. That answers that question. I guess no exhume. World hates Paul. I've been running two fairy macabre in the sideboard of my legacy. Really digging it. Yeah. You know, I have a black deck that I showed, I don't know, four or five months ago. Just speed black. Did terrible, but I love the thing. Um, it's And you can discard Fairy Macabre for nothing and unearth it. And you've got a 2-2 flyer. And that was the theory of the deck anyway, but didn't do so hot after that. Yikes. God, if he has it. Here it comes. Exhume with haste. I have to lose two things. Ouch. Well, when the deck works, it works. Look at that. Beautiful. I think this is almost an auto scoop, guys. <sighs> I mean, I would have to draw two lands in a row to even live here. Yeah, this is a scoop. I there's no there's no outs here. 
put down an L. Come on, Macab. I only have four of them. You think they might show up in my opening hand. Another thing about playing a non-blue deck, you kind of have to have a simplistic... Simplistic's the wrong word. Focus sideboard. Cards have to do a lot of things all at once. And so this gets rid of Moments Peace, Graveyard Interactions, things like that. Gosh, if Apostle's Blessing worked on your opponent's creatures, that'd be so cool. All right, we're going to get a little superstitious here. Mix these up. Hopefully it'll th throw off some algorithm and it'll be like, yeah, now it works. The forest moving there is, is what's going to do this. This is why we're going to win. You just watch. So yeah, we're 2-1 at the moment. Hey, all right, cool. The screen didn't bounce. Mm. Knowing what we're up against, I don't like this hand. We can't attack till turn three. We have no graveyard interaction and a bunch of like green counter spells. I'm going to mulligan this. Hey, there we go. All right, we'll keep this. We will That's tough. I'll throw it on the bottom. It's got like trickery. I'm gonna feel like a fool, but we've got time because we drew the macabre, and I'd like to draw another one. Believe me, in a green deck, nobody sees that coming. It's like well, I think there's that knee jerk reaction people have of like why would you be playing a black card in a green deck? Double Crusher. Woo-wee. What's cool, too, is that we can, uh, when we do cast Macabre, the ex, uh, Exhum hits and we get a 2-2 two -two flying creature out of it. Not that we really care to do damage, Taking a bit of a chance here. Just want to put the pressure on him. It's got electricery. We're kind of screwed. Or lightning bolt. I'm not knowing the deck. That's why I'm just... Exhum tends to be so fine-tuned, it's got to just kind of go all out. And if he kills it, then I just bring it back. If he exhumes, and, or if his deck works. So I'm not too worried about this. All right, well, famous last words. But now I've got a target, unless he's got a, b a bog right behind it. Not feeling too bad. Okay. Careful not to click too fast. This is the deciding game against Black Reanimator. Ouch! Don't like that. That probably means he's got Exhum, though. And if something does slip through Omog style, we'll at least be able to sacrifice our Fairy Macabre. I doubt that we're going to swing that many times. We'll see. All right, let's get rid of both crushers. We'll say I'll bring this back. Thank you very much. That's how it's supposed to work. Well, maybe we can get there with the... Uh... I'm going to play this now so he can't two-for-one me if I equip it later. Got him! <laughs> That's an intoxicating feeling, I tell you. Stop an entire strategy. Put something out for free, and it's not even your turn. Dun, dun, dun. And we're waiting. Okay. Do this now. Sure, why not? Nothing's better than winning with damage with the Infect deck. <laughs> yeah. Spicy, says Lois Stink. I just don't know why more people don't run Macabres. I, it's, I find it hard to justify running um, Relic or the, the Spell Bomb in its place. It's just that much better. It's so good. Well, if he blocks here, 10, 9 will get through, right? It'll be uh, 10, 10, 8 will get through. So any sort of pump here, and we're pretty good to go. Hmm. That'll do it. Throw this on this. Pump this. And it looks like we're off to 3-1 land. Even safe from Chainer's Edict in this scenario. 
Looks like we're a three one so far. Ten's gonna get right on through. Actually, twelve's gonna get right on through. Splat! Thanks to Fairy Macabra. Take that little fight, Mister. That it's always in the decks. <laughs> hey guys, I'm gonna roll to a commercial, and I'll be back in just a few minutes. <laughs> So you, the lad, 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 lad. Do you think the Bible is particularly relevant to this generation? Absolutely. More importantly, it's relevant to me and what I'm doing. Every day I think to myself, old chap, God was talking to you. Yes, sir. Uh, most certainly I didn't hear a word that was just said because I only enjoy things that are about me. Like, of course, the Bible. Are, are, are you saying the Bible was written about you? Don't be ridiculous. Uh, yes, uh, quite ludicrous. I wasn't listening, but I do know that I'm only in the Gospels, the Book of Revelation, and of course Genesis. No, the Bible is not about me, but it is about me. Ah, yes, me, me. I uh, haven't heard a word you've said, but when I first wrote the Bible, this is good, I uh, thought to myself, well, this silly thing will never sell. You wrote the Bible? Uh, needless to say, I haven't been paying attention to any of this, but I was reminded of the time when I created the earth in six days and rested on the seventh. So you're both God. Both. Both. I'm not quite sure. No what one else up here, boys. There's only one, one person in chosen one your one words one rather you, haphazardly. Right? Two Careful would be choice when you use words. Words. The Luxacoff's Wild Mongrel Bubblegum blows colored bubbles, changes colors while you chew. Discard your old brand for something new. Mm, the Luxacoff's Wild Mongrel Bubblegum. It's yummy. And we're back up against Zerlik. We'll see. An advantage knowing what we're playing, but I closed the stream. Yes, but you still know what we're on. Five mana. Yuck. Um, hmm. Yeah, we got to throw that out. Mulligan. Not much better. Keep. We'll throw this on top. Here we are. Mm -hmm. Gets a bit of a game two, three advantage on game one, knowing what we're on. Maybe it's burn. Who knows? Throw our little cannon fodder dude out there. Galvanic Blast. Say no to that. Maybe it's Boros. As I said, this is our probably our worst matchup. <laughs> hmm. Tough call, tough call. I'm just gonna attack here. Get this through. Hope for the best. Hey, it worked. Always a tough feeling when that happens. Oh, hey, oh, we're up one game. Pretty sure that's a Boros build with Galvanic Blast and Red showing up. Must have had, who knows. Point being, Nature's Claim comes in. I'm gonna take just one of these out. One treetop, one pythos. Hmm. What else do I want? If it's that, they will have standard bearer. Uh, 
I'm reading if any of my spells say target creature you control. I don't think any of them do. Nature's claim at four. I'm going to cut out. I mean, we only have three of them. I'm looking for that journey to nowhere play. You know what? I'm the aggro here. Gosh, I, I really like to loop these corpse curves, though. I never dislike seeing them later. I'm actually going to lose a mamba. Let's lose two of these. We'll bring in two gut shots. Hmm. Yeah, it's good against electricery, though. That's a good point, Shiraz. If it is indeed that, hmm. Bring in. I'm just going to bring in the recursion package. I expect this to go a little bit long. Cut shot and uh, trample is going to be good here. I'm going to go like this. If we guessed right, kind of playing the long game. They're going first. Yuck. Colorful. Looks like a happy holidays hand, right? Mulligan this. Keep this. It's kind of like Mulligan in a five here, but. Hmm. I've already got Trample. I want more creatures. Let me get the four mana and the Kerr math real quick here. Yeah, we guessed right. Pretty hard not to with a Mountain Galvanic. All right, Pytho in the house. Here we go. Do I like the Black Infect build? It's not serious, but it has the uh, Haste Goblin. Ooh, man, that can win out of nowhere. Throw a bunch of Bone Splitters on it. Good times. All right, well, we'll have a target for Marasa. At least uh, eat up a bit of the turn there. Okay. Specter General coming down, or is a Skyfisher? Nope. More draw set up. Like I said, I'm happy to get one one win against this deck just because it's uh is easily our worst matchup. The sheer amount of removal. I've got to be careful not to just claim stuff to claim stuff. Kind of want to wait for that mid game journey to nowhere end of turn and then it is like you have hasted creatures so thanks again for that shiraz i was a little blinded by my own tech there and i think i think taking out bracers in this matchup is a good call other than electricery insurance he's going the little man route all right we'll go the marasa route Get us two free swings with that. Hmm. I'm going to play willy nilly here. He doesn't have it. Interesting. Act like we've got vines. If anything, we can claim our own Rancor. If you're ever in this situation against Burn, that's a really cool trick. You snag your own Rancor, gain four life, and Rancor comes back to your hand. So we've already won today. We're 3-2 three, we're three two at worst, 4-1 if we get a little lucky here. But, like, no delusions. This is a very bad matchup. Interesting. Hmm. What we really want here is a tap out. That sucks. I've already got our boost, though. Good that we brought in our, eh, our love there. Hmm. And we're going to need a lot more than that to uh, help out. I'm going to claim our own dude, gain some life. Now we really need gut shot. Corpse curves be nice. I mean, we could kind of infinitely block here. But like I said, they've got lightning bolt. They've got, they just got a journey to nowhere. It's like, Got to have a scenario like last last game where, like I said, at the beginning of the show, this is easily our worst matchup. When I was laying in bed thinking, how can I get that? 
If he's got the uh, anthem effect, that would have been pretty cool there. And here comes Sky Fisher. But we've gained 10 life. That's pretty cool. Dead real soon. We're going to be at least 1 1. We do get to go first. Now that we know he's on standard bear, we did bring in all our gut shots, but they just didn't show. Six, ten, eleven with full scoop. Bolros. That's a loss. Come on, we can go four one with infect. Big infect. No little tricks here. Oh, we only had two gut shots. We'll bring in all four this time. I'll we'll take out one cur with the Marasa. Might be able to kind of recur those. Get it? Bad mana joke or math magic joke. Now the question, should we go for the throat? Let's see. Marasa, corpse cur. They don't have any counter magic, so you can kind of get that corpse cur, corpse cur recursion going. But to be honest, if we're corpse curring corpse curs against Boros, trying to outvalue a value deck, there's a little bit of bad uh, logic in that, don't you think? If I pat my tech on the back too hard there, it's like, it's kind of a losing proposition. Bun dun dun. All right, we've got vines. We've got that. We see I'm tempted here. All that red. Maybe we take out the Pulse Cur package. Just go aggro with Apostle's Blessing. Make it look like this. What do you guys think? We only got 11 creatures in this scenario. We have seven quote unquote counter spells. What are you guys thinking? We got a few seconds. Maybe take out one claim. I think he's leaning a little more heavy on the uh, lightning bolts. I like it, says Mike Man. Try it. Easy for you to say. I'm trying to 4-1 here, not break even. Probably as good as going to get in this situation. That's a good point. Pytho Burst. Since we are going aggro, let's try to win, eh? Maybe I bring in, we'll go from here. We've got Gut Shot, we've got Apostle's Blessing. Going aggro. Creatures are at a minimum here. Yes, we want to go first. Got two creatures. Got some protection suite. Keep. Hope for the best here. Is it six? Go to five, go to five. Nope, not our day. Damn, boom. Did I say this was our worst matchup? Well, it is. But hey, we're one and one. Took excessive screw on their part. I'll go over some other infect builds here too. Wow, look at that. This is rough. Why do I say that? Because when we want to get in for this now, not much other option. I'm not going to play a Mamba and walk into an electricery play. Yeah, strands I'm not too worried about just because of uh, the access to uh, seven artifact creatures. <sighs> Problem number one. Man is right. I need a land here before I play my Mamba so I can at least protect it. Well, one bolt's down. If he's got anything, it might be the blast. If he's got journey, we've got claim. I'm going to play this now. He is at six, in fact, so a bit chancy of a play, but kind of going to show his true colors here as far as what he has. Lightning Bolt, we're dead, but Galvanic, we live. It's tough. It's a tough call, 8686, because um, every other list, some, some of them lean heavy on red. Some of them lean very heavy on the uh, mixing it up with the journey, so... Come on, one Pytho Burst. He's floating a white. Now if he's got Journey to Nowhere. Oh, nope, he's cycling it. 
easy to say now that we need an aggro spell and it's in our hand, but it feels really good if he drops a Journey to Nowhere or Oblivion Ring and such. We've got protection. We've weathered the storm. Yeah, if we're nuking our own land with Nature's Claim against Boros, it's definitely a, a we're losing anyway, but it's it's good times. Here we go. Now then. Probably best to just let him have it. Now we got a hasted green creature. They've already played a land. This is when I love this. Boink. Gain your life. Any pump spell, we win this. Pump. No. All right, well, still up against it. All right, guys. Play this, walk into electricery. But also threaten the win. Of course, we have Apostle's Blessing outside of... I think we hold back. What do you guys say? Play the Murr, says T-Core. 8686, what do you say? I'm tempted to hold back just because if a creature does come down... Of course, the worst scenario is like Sky Fisher into the little dudes, the uh, three one ones, and then it's like, well... Protection's not really going to help us there. Hold back seems to be the consensus. That's an interesting thought there. So if we do do that, and he plays Electricery, we can save one of our dudes. I'm going to hold back. We've got double answer in, a, in the blessing in that. I see it going sideways more by playing that out. And Wangurna, yeah, I know that's a... That's relevant to... What I like about the rebirth play here that if he does have uh, any sort of damage when, when we uh, make it pro-red, it'll at least be able to uh, withstand the heat, get through. So here we go. Prismatic's not available. So I'm thinking our move here is we vines. About the only thing he can nail us with outside of a celestial whatever that one attacking creature. If he's got that, we're screwed. If we vines here, then we can just pro, pro red and attack. I don't see uh, anything wrong with that. Are we pro red now? Draw out a blast. I'll say pro red. We'll kick this. And it looks like we're going to go 4-1 with this weird infect build. Might have been a 5-0 if I didn't punt in uh, round two. I doubt it. I, th I think they had that if you really rewind it. Don't go anywhere. We're going to cover some other decks too, even though this is a... Always a rogue day here on Propaganda. Red. And we will attack, hopefully for the win. Hey! All right. So we went 4-1 with this, uh, I kind of, I call it, um, well, Infect Deluxe 2. Now the original uh, build, which doesn't seem to be doing that as good, it, on paper, this build looks better. You're like, oh, this is a more tournament-worthy tournament worthy deck. But for some reason in this metagame, 
I just don't feel it is. We have a uh, seal of strength, a little bit lower curve. We're only running 17 lands. We've got uh, three three pedals, definitely more explosive. And uh, the Chris Bear is in the side here, running three Predator Strike. And the only like, I guess, roguish angle is I just I'm in love with Treetop Racers, and in fact, there are so many scenarios as hopefully I've shown against uh, at least against elves and uh, even tribe. This there's only so many. You've only got like one or two turns with the, with these kind of decks, so making something unblockable permanently is a pretty big deal. So the sideboard's very similar on this one. The uh, very on the rogue side of things is this. This is an all black infect list, 17 lands. The Dark Ritual, of course. Duress helps you get rid of stuff. Undying Evil, if anything slips through. Unearth is a no-brainer. Bone Splitter. This is the sh I almost swore this is the crap card, um, but it's, it's good to just block junk if you turn it on mid to late game you're able to there, there's been one or two scenarios it's horrible but i i needed that that curve to be right in this for it to actually win in the uh, tournament practice room i don't think i'd ever have the uh, cojones to play this but we've got uh, evasion in this got a lot of uh, life gain ability only evasion that were available here and one of the other worst cards in it but what's cool about this list is this dude black cleaf goblin against control decks and stuff haste baby you got a bunch of bone splitters laying around before you know it people can get pretty mad at this deck because it can kind of win out of nowhere um uh, got infect domain infect gruel in fact all kinds of stuff however i'm going to go over the list here real quick like i said i would the uh flash gordon deck just kind of a Fun little deck on the side here for your, for propaganda. I almost played this today. Maybe I'll play it next week. I don't know. This is one of those uh, scenarios where it, uh, like I said earlier, if you if you missed earlier, I it's like I'll I'll win like ten in a row with this, and I'm like, yeah, this is the next thing. Blah blah blah. Wink wink. And then the second I get high on the deck, just boom, I'll just I'll start dropping. So we've got 19 lands. Two of them are ash barons. One forest. Uh, well, let's see, we got three, six, nine basic islands, two seats, uh, four falls, one tree of tails. Why? Because we've got trinket mage, which helps us grab two longbows, one relic, and one bone splitter for our fetching package. We've got four preordains in this, three dispels, three snaps, the sprites, the vipers, the recluse, which on their own is pretty good against Delver. Pester Might is great in this deck. If you're going against Control, you tap out their uh, Tron lands or whatnot. Usually can buy you a few turns, but what's really cool is you uh, untap and tap, and these this on top of any of these is an instant like Doom Blade on a stick, and you can activate it twice. Or if your mana screwed, you untap your land, come back, boom. Three Pulse of Marasa to keep us competitive, and of course the ninjas show up. I've had a bit of a switcheroo sideboard in this list, Obviously, red's not your friend when you're playing this kind of style. So we got all four hydroblasts. We got three curse for a little switcheroo strategy against a lot of draw, go, counter, and kill everything deck. Which you know we got plenty of room for because we take out a lot of the uh, synergy of the deck to kill stuff out there. Uh, two tranquilities, terrifying presence is my favorite tech in this kind of death touch style deck. They swing with everything. You block with one death touch, dude. Oh, hey, it lives, and I don't take any damage, and it kills your guy. One more relic out of uh, respect for graveyard stuff, and two serrated arrows. No real synergy of, as far as being able to bring these back, but just it's a house against tribe and Delver. If only one of them was around, I'd pr uh, you know if it was just Delver, I might go with that uh, aerial volley or whatever that green spell that does three damage and uh, sets it up. So yeah, we'll we'll be that way. Anyway, so um, other than that, guys, uh, went over that. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to play next week, but I've got quite a bit of editing to do. And like I said, if you want to help support Propaganda, which a lot of you have chimed in and said, hey, how can we do it? Well, head on over to FlipSideGaming.com, order some paper cards, at least $10 or more, enter the promo code Propaganda, and you'll get 10% off. And technically, we get something. We'll see. Like I said, we'll see how it works. Go for that. But so we beat Tribe. We lost to um, Fiend, Fiend Clops. You are at Blitz, whatever you want to call it. Beat Elves, beat Reanimator, and beat Boros, which was a bit of a surprise. Uh, probably should have gone 3 2, but um, hey, there's a reason we, uh, are, I built it that way. It was uh, just, it's, it's one of those. Go over the list here again, real quick, just to close it out nicely. We, this list is different than the other kind of explosive aha one for one you sort of thing in that once once your guy's attacking it's usually 
game over no matter what. And I wanted that consistency, which we saw. I think we only flooded that first game against Tribe. Didn't seem to matter, though. But you just want to be able to pay for everything and then have, have the mana to Blight Mamba and uh, you know regenerate, maybe have Vines back up, as we saw in a few of those games, too. But four Mutagenics, four Glisteners, four Rancors, four Vines. Nothing new. Not, still nothing new. But we get to Treetop Racers, which is kind of the awesome little cute tech of the deck python burst you could easily if um it might even be correct maybe run predator strike over this it's two less damage but man every time i think i'm gonna lose this python burst i'll go up against tron i'm going first i drop you know glistener and i've got like one or two of these in my hand and it's just it's over there's there's nothing for it larger than life one more than the uh instant in predator strike and don't negate uh, sorcery speed stuff in this metagame. Dispels are everywhere, and I've uh, outside of Vines of Vastwood, it's, it's just kind of a dead card against us. Um, you know, we got Blight Mamba for mid to late game and Corpse Guard to round things out. Our sideboard, Protection Suite and Apostle's Blessing. Uh, Fairy Macabre showed its true colors and powers in our uh, Reanimator matchup. Very big MVP, MVP card. One of those, if you've got the discipline to have four of them in your sideboard, do it. There will be a time in your five rounds, or especially on a challenge week, where you're going to love seeing that little lady. If it is a lady. I don't know what the hell that thing is. Very rogue, I guess. Uh, gut shot serves double duty against Delver and Standard Bearers. One Pulse of Marasa to keep that engine going, especially if you get those uh, corpse curs recycling. And then Nature's Claim, as we saw, really good against... Um, Boros in small amounts, depending on the list, but Journey to Nowhere, end of turn, is the main reason we're playing this. Also comes in against Burn, so we can nail our own trees or Rancors in opposite order of that. So, Mono Blue Delver, uh, not so good. I'll just, uh, I mean, it's uh, it's so, if I'll, it's one of those things where if I play this against Mono Blue Delver, I'll, I can win like three in a row and go, hey man, I don't got a problem with this. Got shot, showed up at the right times, and I'm, I'm good to go. But in reality, they've got more gas and bounce, and bounce is one of the things, unless you've got Vines, Blessing, and, and a gut shot heavy draw, you know, it, it's it's kind of a game of mother may I. So it's definitely not one I want to see. I think we've got a better game against that than we do against UR Delver, or, or the, uh, uh, is it Delver, or however they're saying it. So it'll be, uh, be pretty cool. Anyway, guys. That's it for me for Propaganda. We will see you next week. I'm going to roll to a few commercials. If you're new to that sort of thing, I'm going to show the uh, new Dominaria trailer. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for hanging out on Propaganda. Go infect some people. How many times can you rebuild from apocalypse? On Dominaria, we've almost lost count. As we celebrate a world reborn, darkness is growing. Each day waste it brings us closer to ruin. <laughs> I've lived through this cycle, and I know. This time it will be different. Together, we will crush this evil at its source. Forever. Dominaria cannot wait. From the volcano of Balaku to the leech-ridden swamps of Agadim, cast off all your inhibition at the only casino in all Dominaria. Experience the pinnacle of personal pleasure. Venture boldly at Rakdos Casino and may all your underworld dreams come true. Rakdos Casino, the place for premium pleasure.